यूपी सरकार का वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट ये प्रयोग मेक इन इंडिया का ही एक प्रकार से मजबूत विस्तार है ये योजना यूपी को दुनिया के औद्योगिक मानचित्र पर स्थापित करने में सक्षम है वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट इज एन इनिशिएटिव व्हिच इज सीन एज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल स्टेप टुवर्ड्स रियलाइजिंग द ट्रू पोटेंशियल ऑफ अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट फ्यूल इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड जनरेट एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड रूरल ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप taking us to the goal of aatmanirbhar bharat the up government has here marked mirzapur's carpet making industry under their far reaching one district one product program aaj uttar pradesh ki one district one product ki yojana na keval desh ke andar lokpriya yojana bani hai balki duniya mein bhi iski ek nayi dhamak hai hi everybody ever since the independence of our country since the past 75 years we been voicing our concerns for the farmers and small businesses of our country on one side while the capitalists claim that freebies and loan waivers are ruining our economy on the other side the socialists often cry about the lack of facilities and giant companies paralyzing the progress of small businesses and while both socialists and capitalists have been busy arguing the politicians of this country have used it as an opportunity to make promises give out freebies and rise to power but at the end of the day the fact remains that indian farmers and indian small businesses are still struggling even after 75 years but you know what this is where the chief minister of uttar pradesh has come out with an absolutely revolutionary program called the one district one product program and if executed properly it will not just make the indian farmers rich but will also turn the smallest districts of uttar pradesh into the export hubs of the country the best part is that this program has already been so successful in the past 3 years that now it is regarded as the most important scheme for regional economic development all across the country the question is what is this one district one product program what did the up government do so special that it is now being implemented all across the country and most importantly as students of business what are the lessons that we need to learn from this calculative capitalistic program of uttar pradesh this video is brought to you by kuku fm but more on this at the end of the video To understand this UP model, we first have to understand the existing problems in the Indian market and why is the UP government so so keen about this one district one product initiative. You see guys, we all know that India has rich culture, tradition, diversity, geography, blah blah blah. But very few of us actually understand the same Indian culture, tradition, geography and diversity from a capitalistic standpoint. To tell you about it, if you look at Dubai, these guys have spent billions and turned a desert into a tourist hotspot with hotels, amusement parks, aqua venture parks, underwater zoos, and even a ski slope with 6,000 tons of snow inside a freaking desert. And they have done such an incredible job that as of 2019, while India had 17.91 million tourists, Dubai, which is such a small country, had about 16.73 million tourists. Now, do you realize? Whatever Dubai spent billions for, we already have it for free at a scale that even a trillion dollar budget cannot get you. We have mountains, valleys, greenery, desert, beaches, farms and so many more things and yet we are nowhere among the leading tourist destinations in the world. Similarly, we have such a vast catalog of healthy vegan and delicious foods like idli, dosa and dhokla, but even then, the market of these dishes in the international space is close to nothing. In fact, if you look at dosa versus burger, one is extremely healthy and economical and the other is extremely unhealthy and costly. And yet, we do not have anything as big as McDonald's for selling dosas around the world. And considering the upcoming health revolution where coke and burgers are going down, our Indian dishes have a billion dollar market just waiting to be tapped. Similarly, we have so many types of crops, handicrafts, stone arts, woodworks and countless other things that are export worthy, but even then, neither the makers of these products nor we the users have any clue about its potential. And at the same time, we keep complaining about our import export gap widening. Now the question over here is when there is so much potential in India why aren't we able to leverage it well this is where the three major reasons for the one district one product model comes in the first problem that we have is the lack of resources to access the hot markets a classic example of the same is something called the shazar stone art for those who don't know shazar stone is known as the stone of glory and wonder and the reason why it has such flattering tags is because of the mesmerizing colors and patterns seen on the stone and the skill of the artisan lies in cleaning crafting finishing and polishing of this stone the best part is that the variety quality and singularity of these stones is such that no two stones are similar in any way and this unique stone is found exclusively along the ken river in uttar pradesh 
so it's extremely rare but guess what in spite of this stone being mother nature's own work of art in india there is no demand for it at all but the actual market of the stone lies in countries like saudi arabia iran iraq kuwait bahrain and israel this is because the hajj pilgrims from all around the world take shahzar stone souvenirs with quran's quote on it so you see although the product is made in india and is rare since its market lies on the other side of the world these artisans do not have the acumen or resources to access them so they remain poor The second reason for this is the lack of awareness about the high demand markets. For example, even if there is a lot of demand for an easy to digest, low fat, low calorie fermented dish like dosa in Europe, unless the dosa seller in India knows about the market in Europe, he will never be able to capture it. And lastly, we have some miscellaneous but major problems for different products. Like some lack marketing, others do not have the tech to achieve low cost production, and many need government subsidies and consultation to achieve economies of scale. This is the reason why the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh has initiated the One District One Product program, and the vision of this program is to transform every district of the state into an export hub by identifying specific products having export prospects. हम लोगों ने उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर One District One Product लॉन्च कर चुके हैं। इस योजना के तहत विभिन्न जनपदों के चयनित स्थानीय उत्पादों के लिए मार्केटिंग, तकनीकी उन्नयन, कौशल एवं उद्यमिता प्रशिक्षण आसान ऋण की सुविधा उसके माध्यम से उपलब्ध कराई जा रही नाउ विदाउट गेटिंग इनटू द जारगन्स लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द पावर ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम यूजिंग द एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी केस स्टडी ऑफ काला नमक राइस टू टेल यू अबाउट इट काला नमक राइस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट अमेजिंग ग्रेन्स इन द वर्ल्ड व्हिच इज अ नेचुरली सेंटेड राइस विद काउंटलेस हेल्थ बेनिफिट्स इट कंटेन्स अ कंपाउंड कॉल्ड एंथोसाइनिन व्हिच इज एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट एंड हैज एंटी कैंसर प्रॉपर्टीज ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट इट इज नेचुरली ग्लूटेन फ्री इज रिच इन प्रोटीन आयरन विटामिन कैल्शियम मैग्नीशियम एंड नेचुरल फाइबर This makes it a wonderful product for weight loss. And to top it all off, it is known to be a natural detoxifier and its consumption helps in prevention of ailments such as diabetes, Alzheimer's and even hypertension. Now my question to you is, in spite of this miraculous product being grown in your own country, how many of you actually knew about kala namak rice? Very few, right? Well, guess what? This product has a huge market in countries like the US, New Zealand, Australia and even UK. But until 2018 except for a few the farmers were not even willing to grow kala namak rice in India and even if they did it was very difficult for them to sell it and this is where the one district one product program came in as a game changer for these farmers and what happened in the next 3 years will blow your mind as it turns out in some areas the number of farmers growing kala namak rice suddenly went from 15 to 20 to 750 to 800 farmers and the area of this rice cultivation in Siddharth Nagar alone has gone up from 2805 hectares in 2019 to 5000 hectares in 2020 to almost 10000 hectares in 2022 and the best part is that the farmers income has increased by manifolds as the wholesale price of kala namak has increased from 40 rupees per kg in 2018 to 90 rupees per kg in 2020 to 135 rupees per kg in 2021 and now it is actually being exported to western countries with the vision to turn it into a major export commodity of india now the question is how did kala namak rice suddenly become such a phenomenal success in just 4 years and what did the up government do so special well the first thing that the government did was to identify the right markets and help these farmers access and market their products the right way for example the term kala namak rice might be familiar to us but for the people outside of india and for that matter even people in south india who don't understand hindi for them kala namak rice is not a very marketable name isn't it so you know what under the guidance of the government kala namak rice has now been rebranded as buddha rice and it was presented to buddhist monks in order to promote it in buddhist countries and this includes countries like korea china japan vietnam cambodia and myanmar this is because it is believed that lord buddha broke his fast with a pudding made of the same rice On top of that, the government even assisted the farmers to package the rice with Buddha branding, and this is what the packaging looks like. So it's not only Lord Buddha's picture, but also has a quote that has a secret backstory. So you see, suddenly, merely by changing its branding, now Kala Namak Rice is appealing to a huge international market. Secondly, a lot of assistance was given to the value chain of Kala Namak Rice, and this includes demonstrations of cropping system, distribution of high yielding varieties of seeds. improved farm machineries integrated nutrient and pest management techniques processing and post harvest equipments and a ton of other trainings was given to the farmers thirdly 
the UP government organized special festivals to give market access to our farmers. In this case, for Kala Namak Rice, a three-day festival had been organized in Siddharth Nagar in collaboration with the Export Promotion Department in March 2021. This festival brought farmers and buyers on the same platform and created awareness such that the farmers could understand the market and the buyers could understand the product. In fact, the UP government hosted festivals not just for Kala Namak Rice, but also for Strawberry and Jaggery. And now, the government is looking to organize a similar fest for dragon fruit to further expand its market. On top of that, e-commerce platforms like Amazon and Flipkart are also being used to provide a larger market to farmers and FPUs. In fact, in 2020, Flipkart signed an MOU with the government of Uttar Pradesh. So now, Flipkart is actively engaged in breaking the entry barriers for the farmers by extending time-bound incubation support. And this includes benefits in the form of onboarding, free cataloging, marketing, account management, business insights, and warehousing support. And you will be delighted to know that as of 3rd June 2022, Flipkart announced that government's ODP products have recorded sales of 1600 crores. And this is since 2020 only. Similarly, there are other avenues opening up with Amazon and other e-commerce companies. And lastly, there is something called CFC or Common Facility Centers coming up for Kala Namak Rice and other ODOP products. This center will provide all the facilities under one roof, including training for branding, marketing, credit, finance, skill development, general and air condition storage, processing, grading, packaging and barcoding machines as per the requirements of the goods. These CFC centers are being established not just for Kala Namak Rice, but for all ODP products across UP. The best part is, while the cost of a single CFC is close to 15 crores, the government itself will bear 90% of this cost. And in total, the government of Uttar Pradesh has provided financial assistance of 8,200 crores, benefiting 2,600 entrepreneurs in the last three years itself. So in summary, marketing and branding to achieve product market fit, education and guidance to optimize production, festivals to give access to the untapped but high potential markets, combined with e-commerce MOUs and government subsidies, turned Kala Namak Rice into a phenomenal success and more importantly, into an emerging export commodity for Siddharth Nagar. Similarly, for the products like Shazar Stone that have an international market, the government of Uttar Pradesh is planning to host international expos through the Indian embassies so that these businesses can take their products to the other side of the globe. This is just one of the many many examples of how the Uttar Pradesh government is laying the foundation to turn each of its districts into an export hub. I'll give you a long list of all the ODP products and their districts so that you can actually find out what the government is doing to understand it better. And the result of this program has been such that in the last five years, Uttar Pradesh has witnessed a gradual increase in its exports from 81,000 crores in 2015-16 to 1.2 lakh crores in 2019-20. This is a substantial jump of 48%. And the fun fact is that almost 80% of these products which have been exported from the state belong to the ODOP category. Furthermore, the government of Uttar Pradesh has set an ambitious target of exporting 3 lakh crore worth of goods in the next 4 years itself. Now what remains to be seen is how quickly and effectively can they achieve it. And because of this phenomenal success that ODOP has achieved, now the same initiative is being initiated in 16 other states. So just like Kala Namak Rise in agriculture, in the textile sector, we have the Kanjipuram silk from Tamil Nadu, full curry from Punjab and terry towels from Maharashtra. In the agricultural products, we have Kandhamal Haldi from Odisha, Varukulam pineapple from Kerala and Ittar from Uttar Pradesh. This is the story of one district, one product initiative. And this brings us to the last part of the episode, which is about the lessons that we need to learn from this modern day government model. Meanwhile, if you are someone who wants to know more about the greatest political leaders of India, you must check out the audio book on Atal Bihari Vajpayee on the Cuckoo FM app. Cuckoo FM is India's leading audio learning platform with 4.5 plus rating and a thousand plus non-fiction audio books in multiple regional languages all across India. And my favorite books in this app is The Art of War for Geopolitics and Start with Why for Business. So if these kind of subjects intrigue you, go download the Cuckoo FM app from the link in the description. And by the way, only for Think Schoolers, the coupon code Diwali50 will be active from 19th to 25th of October. And this will help you get 50% off on the premium subscription and a chance to win gifts like car, gold coins and vouchers up to 10 lakh rupees. And after 25th of October, you can use the code THINK50 to avail a 50% discount. Moving on to the lessons, the first thing we need to learn from this case study is that having the potential to do something and doing something has a big, big difference. 99% of the products and businesses with great potential fail. Why? Because nobody acts to extract the value out of that product. In this case, Kala Namak Rai's 
Dhokla, Dosa and Kanjipuram sarees, all these products have the potential to scale. But unless the government and the people do something about it, even after a century, we'll be left with futile tales of India's big potential. Lesson number two, product and market both are useless unless there is a product market fit. In this case, the Shazer stone is rare, it's beautiful and also has a big, big market in the Middle East. But again, unless they are given access to these markets, those products will be worthless. And lastly, sometimes even though you have a great product, it might just need a better name and a better story to resonate with your audience. In this case, we saw that Kala Namak Rice, which was a term alien to many, became an iconic product for a huge market just because it got named as Buddha Rice. So rebranding is super duper powerful. So keep an eye on the name of your product and the story behind it. Meanwhile, before we say goodbye, we will also be covering some of the most underrated business case studies in the next one month. So stay tuned for that and drop a comment about your favorite underrated product or a company that deserves a shout out and an international market. Do mention their links along with it so that if we find it worthy, we can share it with all of you. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.